As a general doctor, I've always known about advanced directives for medical emergencies, a form people complete saying what treatments they would or wouldn't want if in a crisis. But as the daughter of a man with paranoid schizophrenia, I recently learned about advanced directives for mental health emergencies, so my dad could say what treatments he would and wouldn't want during a psychiatric crisis, when his thinking is overcome by severe delusions, and what he says about treatment doesn't usually reflect what he'd really want. For years I've been concerned about my dad, who lives far away. He's doing well now, and I'm wondering how this advanced directive can help. It's called a mental health or psychiatric advanced directive, abbreviated PAD, and called a PAD. And it's meant to help people with severe mental illness, such as schizophrenia or sometimes bipolar or major depression, have more control of their care. Half of states have specific forms for this, and in the others, preferences can be added to a medical advance directive. The forms usually ask about three main things. What can help if a person starts to go into crisis, like people to call? What treatments would and wouldn't the person want during a crisis, and why? And finally, who would they want to help make treatment decisions on their behalf? Finally, the form is put in the person's chart and given to all those who may be involved in their care. And if they start to have problems with their decision-making, the directive is there to let their healthier voice be heard. I want to learn more about psychiatric advanced directives and to take one to my dad. My mom left my dad when I was only six months old, but I grew up seeing him a lot, never knowing whether or not he'd be in a paranoid crisis, ranting uncontrollably about the police or CIA being after him. Things got worse when I was in medical school, and he'd show up at my doorstep 400 miles from his residence, off medicines and acting psychotic. I took him all over, trying to get him care. But in his state, he was refusing treatment. And I was told he didn't meet criteria to be treated against his will. But this was my dad. I knew he didn't want to stay in this paranoid way. I'm feeling nervous about visiting dad. Talking to him about his care has never been easy. So dad, this is what's called a mental health advance directive. And it's for like, if you ever had a crisis, what things you would want. It's for you to right now during a time when you're doing really well, to have control. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein tablets and put your helmet on. Okay, what signs or behaviors would let others know that you are getting worse? I guess if I started smoking more than one pack a day, I'd be so depressed that people would notice it. Okay. And which of the following medicines would you consent? We already talked about you don't want lithium, but you would consent to? Anything but lithium Anything. and shock treatment. Okay. Do you have some preferences? Well, I don't know why we're doing this, honey. I'm not I'm, going to the hospital. But remember, I'm a doctor. This is kind of like how I... I think about things as how to prevent things and how to kind of write down what you yeah. want. My dad's clearly not excited about this, but I'm glad we're having these conversations. And I have spoken to others who've used an advanced directive and found it helpful. The final thing was that I didn't know what reality was. I mean, it had gotten that bad. Yeah. We were living under bridges. Uh, living in the shelters, but the shelters were not, um, if you would make mistakes at the shelters, you would be put out. When you go from a uh, depressive to manic, uh, you, you know, your thoughts aren't totally uh, good thoughts a lot of times. And then uh, me knowing that I had the directive in place actually gave me the strength to go, you know, and, uh, and to get, get help again. They knew that 
this was in place and it didn't make me go into a lot of detail about a lot of things I didn't want to go into detail about. And all those were followed to the T. I don't hear voices because the medication keeps me from doing that. It's been about two or three times I've used the pad. This last time, the use of Zyprexa was added. That's what I use as my emergency medication. And with the pad, I don't worry about what's going to happen in the middle of a crisis or what I'm not going to say in the emergency room or how's it going to be handled. I realize that a major reason that I want Dad to do this directive is because on it, he can say who he wants to help make treatment decisions when he's in a crisis. He's put me, and I'm glad about this. But I wouldn't always have felt this way. For so many years, I was conflicted about how connected I wanted to be with Dad, how involved to be in his care. But now that I'm older, I do want to be involved and it's a relief that the medical system will know this. The people met me and my father and uh, went over and see if we were on the same page. That He knew my desires that I wanted, uh, the type of treatments and facilities and medications that I wanted to be. That's a uh, burden lifted off of them uh, to have uh, something to go by, you know, to know my wishes instead of just guessing. I went with, it was better for me to use the doctors because everyone in my family is more like, all you need is some rest. And rest wasn't getting it. <laughs> People would talk to me, but they couldn't understand it, that I could understand what they were saying. It's just that I couldn't respond. Even down to the part of putting me on shock treatment. I had three treatments and my sister stopped it. I think I wish I had went to full course. Yeah. For her shock treatment, I mean being something like out of an old movie <laughs> on television, <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't that. I learned from researchers that just the process of completing a psychiatric advance directive makes people feel better about their mental health care and their providers. And if they go into a crisis, they are indeed more likely to get the care they want. And the treating psychiatrists find the directives useful. As part of the study that we completed on psychiatric advance directives, we heard from psychiatrists who said how helpful it was to have the client's wishes for treatment uh, expressed succinctly in uh, an advance directive. But I discovered that these forms aren't being used much. People don't know about them, or there's confusion. Like what if someone writes something in their advance directive that wouldn't help them to get better? What would the treating team do? the psychiatrist uh, can choose not to implement a part of the advanced directive that isn't consistent with community practice standards. I remember my own training when medical advanced directives were new. Everyone had questions, the doctors, the patients, the families. But as the forms were used more and questions were answered, we saw how helpful the forms could be. Now I'm wondering about psychiatric advanced directives. What's going to make them be used more? How will people learn that they're free off the internet and that people generally do need help filling them out, whether it be family, peers, or healthcare providers? And when will everyone in mental health care start routinely offering these to people? What do you think is going to help to get these things to be used more? You're going to have to have people who have dealt, have, have used mm -hmm. it, uh, involved, and have them go and meet uh, with these people and let them know what a positive thing it's yeah. been in their life. It's all due to having that directive in place that I was got the right treatment the last time. The plan is to give a copy of Dad's directive to all those involved in his care. 
So if he starts to go into a crisis, we'll know what he wants to help stop it. Or if he's in a full crisis, what he wants to happen. We start by giving one to the director of Dad's housing complex. We would keep this as part of the uh, member file. Uh -huh. Okay, so that yeah. wouldn't be a problem, and you think people no. would be able to know to access it? Oh, yes. Yeah, so this is part of our procedure now. Okay. Do you see any problems with this in general? No, it seems to be very positive because it's a, it's a way to identify the wishes of the individual and to follow that, similarly as to a medical situation. Mm -hmm. Dad still has his doubts about this advanced directive. I think about his past and all the control of his life that was affected by his illness. What now can I do to help him gain a little more control of his life? I'm hopeful that this directive will help. Mm -hmm.